Oceana, West Virginia is a town of about 1,300 people in the heart of coal country. Attention, Jim Care 41, 54-year-old male, electrocution, 1,600. And if you call 911 to report a medical emergency, chances are Nick Lawrence is the guy who will show up. The crazy thing about these electrocution calls, you really don't know what you're getting into. He's one of the few volunteer EMTs in Wyoming County who answers calls 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So what happened there? I was going in that box because she was having a problem out of her power. And I pulled that box up and I flipped the breaker off. And then I flipped it back on and I shut the box. And just as I did, it hit me and knocked me from over here. And he's got burns in the hands. Colton. Get the sterile water back out of the bag and bring it over here. On his right hand, he had severe um, second, third degree burns all over uh, his fingers. Oh, I feel that. <laughs> the skin was peeling off of him, so we know it was pretty severe burns. It looked like he hit about 10 feet away, six to 10 feet. That's, what That's where he landed. I've never been hit that hard in my life, not with nothing. Well, that was a lot of power. Being a volunteer medic doesn't pay the bills, so Lawrence also runs his own business, making sure coal mines and logging sites are up to code. I mean, I would much rather be doing a million other things right now than to be stamping papers, signing my names, and blacking out social security numbers. Growing up, did EMS ever cross your mind as a, as a job um, that you wanted to do? Not emergency medical, uh, so not really EMS, but m the medical service, yeah, absolutely. I started in nursing school, and I, at the time I was working through my EMT class, and I just I picked up a love for it, quit the nursing thing, just kind of gave up on the whole medical side and stuck with emergency medical. There's more adrenaline. I feel like you can make a bigger difference this way. I was in the fire department this Nick. What would happen if your volunteer EMTs didn't exist here in Oceana? I know that there's going to be some people that don't like this answer, but it is what it is. There would be dead people here. Like, there would, there would have been people who would have bled to death, would have been people who had the stroke. We only run 300 to 400, sometimes a little bit more, calls a year. And, I mean, that's 300 to 400 times that somebody's called 911 expecting us to show up, and we showed up. Place your left hand on the Bay of Bible and raise your right hand. And in 1981, when President Reagan cut taxes, he eliminated federal funding for emergency medical services, leaving states and cities to figure out how to pay for them. The largest income tax cut in American history. Cities were able to come up with the money, but often small towns couldn't collect enough taxes to keep professional EMTs on the payroll, so volunteers picked up the slack. Across the country, towns that have less people have even less EMTs. And in West Virginia, the number of emergency personnel dropped by nearly 20% from 2015 to 2018, according to available numbers. West Virginia is, if not God's waiting room, it's at least God's foyer. We're normally about the third oldest population in the nation. We are also one of the sickest populations in the nation. Let's see what I can find for you here. Debron Jenkins is the executive director of the West Virginia Rural Health Association. This is the economic impact of primary care physicians. Our primary goal is to provide good data so that good decisions can be made, not based on who's screaming the loudest or what's sexy this month. Why is it your job to be collecting this data? Well, because nobody else was, basically. So that's why we developed this interactive portal so you could see, hmm, this county doesn't have a hospital, this county has a lot of poverty, this county has this, and start building trend analysis as to why this is happening. With an older, dwindling population, really a sick population, a poor population, what kind of access do they have to, to emergency medicine, to hospitals? What does that look like right now? Uh, there are deserts within uh, West Virginia where you don't have access. More emergency services in rural West Virginia means more access to health care. And Jenkins thinks the data that she's collected will convince lawmakers to increase funding to these programs. 
Vice News reached out to the West Virginia Office of Emergency Medical Services on how they'll address the EMT shortage, but didn't receive a response. Put my boots on. I've ran calls that, by all means, I mean, they, they've messed with me. We've, I've seen all kinds of burnt bodies. People have died in house fires. People I've knew, I've seen car accidents with, you know, people's face half tore off, brain matter laying out. I've seen suicides where, I mean, you wouldn't wish it on anybody. It just looks horrible. A few weeks ago, Lawrence answered a call that almost made him quit. Give me just a minute. He showed up on the scene and realized his friend was having a heart attack. This is the first time since his friend died that he's visited the work site where they met. We got called to go to um, where he lived. And I mean, I didn't know it was going to be him. I got, got there and I sure enough it was. He ran the load. <laughs> that load was right, right there in the middle. There's no benefits. I mean, there's no reason to keep doing it. Other than the fact that if I was to quit, who was going to step up? 